of working with students on experimenting with the new forms of the short form episodic, uh, which is very exciting because film students have never had the ability to make something that they can make money from. Everything has always been, you could make money from a screenplay, but a production student could only make a short. Some film students have succeeded in making a feature, even in 35 millimeter or 16, you would see. But then to have a feature and then actually get it distributed is the, the next step of difficulty. Uh, so most film students do shorts films, which have no commercial value, and then they go and <coughs> uh, try to get a recognition in a contest so they can make a real film. Uh, even though I, there are short films that are, there are certainly real films, and I, there are some that I totally love, but there's not really a market for it for reasons that are actually, I mentioned in the book, there's a reason why the short film disappeared 100 years ago and never came back. It has to do with how our brains work in terms of learning about, in terms of experiencing movies. Uh, we, when we watch a movie, we watch it for the emotional payoff, the emotional payload that it carries. But to get the payload, to get that emotional payoff, we need to invest our energy in it, in learning. Learning is a cognitive demand made on us. And that means we have to learn who, what, when, where, under what conditions is the story taking place. We have to take, it takes time to learn that. And that's a little bit draining. But it's okay if there's a payoff uh, of emotion and we're willing to make the investment. And if it takes 20 minutes for us to learn who, what, when, where, under what conditions, uh, and we have a feature length film, well, we've got an hour and a half of payoff. If we have a series, you, it's even more efficient. I mean, once you learn who Jerry, George, Kramer, and Elaine are, and the basic circumstances, you can run a, a Seinfeld for a decade, and people will just keep tuning in and tuning in because they've done the work initially. Um, but in a short, by the time you've learned those things, it's over. And now you've got to do it over again and over again. And if you ever tried to sit down through an evening of short films, especially ones by people you don't know, which is most of the time, uh, featuring actors that you don't know, it's exhausting. Even if they're good, it takes a lot out of you. So those went away in the teens and were replaced by the full-length feature and the serial. And the serial is what we now call the short form episodic. It's uh, back then they started as single reels uh, episode. So you have 10 minute episodes, which is now in fashion again. And they became standardized at two reels, 30 minutes, roughly, 20, 30 minutes. So uh, that form has endured, endured in television, because it's efficient. <coughs> and now, for the first time since film schools were invented, students can do something that, they, that can be directly sold or they can make money from. It's a commercial form. And students can do that. Now, they can't make hire a big star. Uh, they can't do a very elaborate, uh, expensive movie. But if they, can, if they can create stories and if the acting is good and you can get good actors, then you can create something that people will watch. And the way technology is, uh, and I know uh, Stefan, is that uh, the teachers like him, who are teaching the technical side, at least to some extent, and uh, probably does more than that. But these students can create things that look professional. You don't look at it. Maybe when it was 16 millimeter black and white, you would say that looks like a student film. But the technology and the and the learning is such now. My Chapman students, you don't know it's a made by a student. It looks like it's professional. And if you can, um, 
you can do that and if the writing can step up to that level, then you can create something that people want to watch. And if it's a short form episodic, you can tell them you know, maybe they'll, they won't invest in a half hour short film or a 20 minute short film, but if you make a five minute episode and tell them would you watch five minutes and then if you want to watch the next five minutes, fine. If not, don't. People might give you the five minutes because it's not that big an investment. And if you can hook them, then you can, um, uh, you can keep them, keep them watching. And suddenly student filmmakers, not just the writers who've always had this challenge, but the filmmakers too, can solve the basic problems that you need to solve to be a professional filmmaker, which is how do you hook your audience and how do you keep your audience? You don't worry about those in a short film because you're going to watch it in a festival. You're already there. You don't have to be hooked and you got no place to go. But if you're trying to get something out there and get people hooked on it in the wide world, then that's a challenge. And if you can master that, you can be successful. And that's suddenly now relevant. Now a film student can grapple, a filmmaker can grapple with that and try to figure out how can we get an audience. There used to be no audience. Now there is. You can put it out there. You can distribute it yourself if you have to. It's still a lot of competition. It's still very difficult, but it, it's something that never existed before. You couldn't make a film, even a feature in film school, and then just put it out there. You had to find somebody who's going to market it, somebody who's going to put money into distribution, beg theater owners, independent ones, please show my movie. Nobody's going to show up. But now you, you have an opportunity. And um, so that area is one that at this stage <coughs> in my life I'm interested in working, especially in the school, with students. And I, they're, they're really good writers but can use some guidance in storytelling and collaborate with them and create stuff that isn't a student film but is a film and that people are going to watch and be excited by. And there's nothing holding them back anymore. You don't need permission from somebody. You don't need to a million dollars. You can do it very simply. And that's an exciting time to be alive. I think uh, George Lucas was quoted as saying that when his group of people, uh, the Lucas and, and Coppola and Spielberg, when they arrived in Hollywood, he said, a seam opened up in history and they walked through that seam. <coughs> and I think we're in another seam right now. And our students are very lucky. They've got this opening and there's hunger for the content. Uh, and they'll take a chance on people. And if you're a young person, maybe you're, you're, you know what's going on. You're plugged in. That market of teens and early 20s, that's a market they really desire. Boy, if, you can, if you're one of them and you know how to tune into that, then you can create something and people could be interested. Um, there's a series I was recently told about called um, The Haunting of Sunshine Girl. Very simple. Very simple series done on an iPhone or, or a Samsung Galaxy. May have been, I don't know. I didn't see it. But one minute to three minute episodes uh, about a, a girl, a teenage girl, who's convinced that there's some supernatural evil in the house that they just moved into. And each one, she knows how to hook you. And very simple. And she's, she got a deal for doing more. And it's it wouldn't have happened before, ever. And now it's possible.